Hello everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Will and in this particular video what I want to do is to just kind of go through this particular project that I'm writing at the moment. It's just going to be a sort of uh, a casual walkthrough of this framework slash engine that I'm building um, which will leverage um, some of the game projects that I have in mind. So without much further ado, let's just get straight into things. So uh, really simple stuff. It's really rudimentary at the moment. Um, this particular framework allows me to manipulate 2D graphics and I have um, controller parsing as well. And so I can make an interactive experience that I'm targeting. Well, in this particular case, I'm actually targeting a fighting game experience. So um, with this particular engine, uh, I'm using C Sharp. Um, I'm building on top of Win2D, um, which is a library um, which leverages Direct2D APIs which allows you to make smooth, fast graphics, which I do have some videos. I've covered the topic of Win2D on this channel a couple of times or so. And um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of start a, a series of updates on this particular engine. And now um, the reason I'm calling it an engine is because for for quite a while, I've, I've, I've always opted to write the game projects that I start um, closely coupled to the framework. What what I mean what I mean by that is, basically, the game is written around the framework. But in this particular case, and it's very tightly coupled with the framework, I really wanted to increase cohesion whilst um, lessening coupling. So I wanted to decouple the aspect that is the game and the and the underlying framework. So that I can just reuse the code base anytime I want to extend it for a different kind of game or functionality. So I consider that an engine, you know, some kind of framework that allows me to um, extend its functionality in order to create something. You know, in this case, it's a 2D fighting game that I'm, a I'm aiming to make. And uh, so enough of that. Um, yeah, and sprites are really simple right now. Uh, I, I drew this myself. And obviously, it's not professional or anything, but it just gets the, it, it kind of just like, it gets the point across, you know. Um, at the moment, it, it looks really simple. Like, she's, the character on the screen, she's literally running forward, strafing back. She's got little idle animation. But what's actually happening under the hood is a little bit more than it may seem. So, I want to actually just quickly um, just talk a little bit about how I'm approaching this. I actually wanted to first implement this engine as a set of li like a libraries or a library or libraries um, depending on how I wanted to um, structure things but it was so weird it was probably something to do with the way I was coding but I tried because I, I'm using Win2D I basically had um, Win2D is a dependency on a on a library that I was writing so to, in order to make my library work as a standalone UWP library for this particular context, I needed to download Win2D for that library. As soon as I started plugging in functionality for animations, physics and everything, and running it on a bespoke UWP project, I was getting really, like, I don't know why, it was probably me, but things were really slow. And I know Win2D is fast, so when I would run very similar code, but everything running natively in the project, the UWP project, it was fine. So I was quite, disapp not disappointed, but I was kind of, I don't want to use the word discouraged, but I decided to opt away from um, sort of uh, creating standalone libraries, although that's the ideal case, and just basically encapsulating the functionality, most likely with interfaces, and implementing those interfaces via classes that can be accessed in some project. That's the ideal approach I have to building an engine. And I think that's one of the most optimal ways you can go about it. And it's not off the cards. But at this stage of the game, I suppose I'm sort of testing the waters um, whereby I'm using a UWP project uh, itself. And all the functionality is um, separated via classes. So you can't see my solution explorer at the moment because I've got my di my diagnostic session, but I have a simple physics class dealing with uh, movements. I have um, my animated draw, uh, my animated update. I've got uh, an input buffer for checking inputs. 
And the interesting thing is, it's really early days, as you can see. I mean, I've got less than a thousand lines of code on the main class. So, um, still got a ways to go. I thought it might interest you if I talk a little bit about the way I'm approaching this. So, for example, with the animated update. Oh, sorry, no, the animated draw. I have a function, a, a local function called parse player movement. If we just go in here, for every time the player is idle, I call e dot drawing session draw image pretty standard stuff for drawing an image on Win two D. And this context is to draw the um, the run the idle animation. Sorry, but I pass the animation, or rather, I pass a buffer in this case. In this case, I use a a, a list of canvas bitmap to function as a buffer of all my play animations. And the functionality of this class, of this function, animate sprites, is set up so that all you have to do, it, ab it abstracts away some of the legwork. So as long as you call this function and pass a list of animated uh, bitmaps containing the sprite information, the, I should say, animating on frames. So if you want to animate on two, you will change that to two. If you want to animate on threes, you change that to three. I'm animating this idle animation on eights. So for each frame of animation, it's rendered on the screen eight times before it increments to the next um, the next frame. So the functionality ch takes care of that. Uh, I forgot what zero means. Let me just see if I can find it on my overloads. Ah, in the frame index lower. So where you want the animation to start. So in this case, because it's a particular, it's a separate buffer for each animation move from a move set. Um, I start from zero and it just goes up to count minus one. So because it's a zero index situation, um, I don't want to um, put count all the way. I, I minus one just to accommodate for the zero indexing. And I pass a reference of the main class and I pass a rect struct to hold the bounds of the graphics. And just quickly looking at my notes and physics is quite interesting as well. Um, I have a bespoke physics class here and it takes care of, um, it's pretty rough right now, but it takes care of camera offsetting. Um, so I've got camera offsetting. These aren't doing anything really, um, hence why they're not being used. But the main parallaxing is being dealt with here. As, it, as I kind of uh, glean towards, this is really rudimentary stuff and really early days, so things are really scruffy, but I thought it might be interesting just to make a video about what I'm doing right now. And so the general idea with this particular, um, as I said, this particular engine is to is to leverage the work, let's say 50% of the work, because let's face it, whether you're using an engine or coding a game from scratch, there's always going to be like, should I say, um, the challenge, the learning curve, right? It's never going to be easy, but what this allows you to do is to focus a little, just, just a little bit more on the creative process rather than the functional process itself um, because this project actually abstracts away some of the functionalities you'd expect from a 2D fighting game, like command buffer, um, sorry, command input buffers. Like, for example, uh, I, I arranged this to render for a target resolution of 1280 by 720, but the scaling is not right. And if I just stretch this down, you'll see what I mean. As you can see, there's a little bit more to see down there. And these, these arrows are actually my input buffer monitor. So if I go ahead and start just tapping on my the face buttons on my um, Xbox controller, you see A, B, uh, X, A, Y, that's because I'm tapping those buttons on the on the controller and I just put some debug information so that I can see what's going on to help me with my debugging. So uh, there's still a lot, to, there's still a ways to go to make this a uh, fully fledged engine, I suppose, um, uh, as far as the term goes. Well, it's been really interesting. And um, yeah, I suppose the view for this project is to... I mean, if it got to a point where I released a community edition, it would be really interesting to see because I don't see a lot of 2D fighting game frameworks or engines out of a few, a couple notable ones. Um, so maybe I'd, if, if, you know, I got this to some presentable states that it could be, you know, released. Uh, how I would do that, I did consider like having an editor layer 
sitting on top of the framework. But then you'd, you'd obviously need um, to run the editor. The editor will be part of the runtime, which means that to run your game that you may build with the editor, um, you'd be running the engine as well, um, in, in a sense, because it'd be part of the runtime. So that's the first way I would approach it. Other than that, it might just be a set of tools um, implemented as libraries uh, and the project the project itself. Um, so almost like a project type, I suppose. Um, you know when you get those DirectX 12 and 11 templates uh, from, from your Visual Studio session? Something like that. You know, gets you started with some skeleton code and maybe offers a couple libraries. I'm thinking of implementing it like that, this particular framework, because uh, it's the simplest way to go about it for me as far as I can tell. So I just wanted to make this short video just to kind of go through that. Um, I thought this was just really interesting. I've only spent a couple or so days, just a few days on this, really, um, just fleshing it out. And I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing right now. I can really imagine where this can go um, with, with the necessary touches that it needs and the necessary um, additions and functionalities to really make it support fast, um, fast, um, reliable 2D graphics for, for a fighting game. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, my name is Will. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, there should be links to my portfolio and website if you're interested. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching guys and I bid you a great day. Have a good day. Bye-bye.